Bomac is free. Will Terrence Crawford now stop stalling the Earl Spence rematch? What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Cardinal Red, Cardinal Red. But let's talk about it. All right, y'all. So news is breaking that Brian Bomac, the trainer of Terrence Bud Bud Crawford, was released today. And I just wanted to give my 24 nickels on what's being said for anybody listening. Good news is Brian Bo McIntyre is a free man. So he had a hearing recently. He had essentially a star-studded list of people who came up and spoke on his behalf, including Terrence Bud Crawford, the current undisputed welterweight champion and the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. All right, y'all. So... Bo Mac, Big Mac, what I like to call him, is free. He got released from jail over in the UK. Now, the details that are being put out there is that Bo Mac got a 20-month suspended sentence, which means he was facing about two years in prison. And I'm sure that there's a lot of stipulations that go along with that. I'm sure he had to post some type of bail to get out. Terrence Crawford actually showed up for the arraignment hearing. So I'm sure along with his lawyer being there, that having a type of character witness, you know, to help have you released, I'm pretty sure that helped out a lot for Bomac. And, you know, that's good that Terrence Crawford was able to do that for his trainer. Now, I'm not a Terrence Crawford fan, not really a Bomac fan. You know, I don't hate either one of those guys, but I do feel like that that's a good thing that Terrence Crawford was able to show up and support his guy. Now, my question for the boxing community is, will Terrence Crawford now that he has his trainer back, will he stop stalling the Earl Spence rematch? Stop stalling, nigga! Because I feel like everything that's been going on over the past few weeks since the Earl Spence rematch has kind of been put on hold. It's just a stalling tactic. I think that it was Terrence Crawford stalling the rematch because he didn't know if his trainer was going to be there or not. What made him think that was going to be a good idea? So I said that in a video or two, you know, go back through the archive and find it. <laughs> but it, it was in the, in the past 10 videos I said that. <laughs> but, um, you know, I feel like that him going after Canelo so hard, I'm sure he would love to get that big bag of money that goes along with the Canelo fight, but I think him going after Canelo was pretty much a stall tactic, try to keep his name relevant until that they could figure out what was going on with Bo Mack and if Bo Mack was going to get out or actually have to do some time. Now we know he doesn't have to do any time. Now Terrence Crawford can fully focus on this rematch once he gets back to the States. Like I said, he did go over to the UK to support Big Mac and they were able to get him released. So no more excuses, no more stalling, no more Canelo talk because we all know that the Canelo fight, it could happen, but he's going to have to bend to so many terms. I don't even think that it's worth him wasting time on the Earl Spence fight. Pretty much is going to come with a nice payday. Shut the hell up, rich boy. You know, somewhere around $20 million for both guys. Now, we've heard that Terrence Crawford wants more money to fight him at 154 or they can have a fight at 147. I think either way it goes, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I do feel like if they had it at 154, it's a slight advantage for Spence. If they have it at 147, it's a slight advantage for Crawford. But as long as he's prepared, I don't see why he can't beat Terrence Crawford at 147 because I think it's a matter of preparation and him preparing the correct way. The reason that he lost the first fight. So, you know, with all that being said, at least we know what's going on with Bo Mack and he can't use that excuse for why they haven't actually, you know, made the fight. Because we've heard so many fight dates, we've heard that it was gonna happen at the end of the year. We heard it was gonna happen at the beginning of 2024. 
We heard that he was going after Canelo. We heard that he was going after uh, Jermail Charlo. And then the Canelo-Charlo fight happened. He don't want to fight Charlo no more. He wants Canelo now. And Canelo said he don't really have him on his radar. So the only thing he's left with is a possible fight with Boots. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And if he doesn't take the Boots fight, he's going to get stripped of that IBF title anyway. So... I think he's not going to be uh, undisputed for too much longer. And if he takes any other fight, he's not going to get a $20 million payout the way he would for an Earl Spence rematch. So his back is kind of up against the wall when it comes to his options. does have options, but very limited options. Most of them are, you know, options that don't seem too good because... He would have to go to 147 and fight Boots or Stanley Onis or someone of that caliber who could possibly beat him, make him look kind of bad, or he could take the Earl Spence rematch. He said he feels like it's not worth anything, but $20 million is the biggest payday you're going to get anywhere outside of Canelo. Canelo don't want to fight you, so <laughs> I don't see that fight happening anytime soon, perhaps in 2024, but it's most likely going to happen after the Earl Spence rematch. I know people gain freedom until some have to die, some lose their wealth, some give up money. His life meant nothing when it came to the freedom of his daughter, his son, the future of his nation. But whenever people want to really make progress, some have to sacrifice a lot. And I like to say, um, so why should I worry about going to little old jail to free my poor people who's been catching hell here for 400 years? So let me know what y'all think about all that down in the comment section below. That like button for me. A share, share, share. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Holler at me on all social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. But you're more than likely to get a response on the tube. So holler at me over there. If you want to collab feature a product or your channel or my channel, feel free to hit my Gmail because it is a flock of cards at Gmail. Yeah, and we are mad at him. I always bragged I would get her when I seen her out in front of the crib Looking like she lost her will to live All rusty, holes in her shoes, glasses busted Getting caught in the rain, had a musty Skies on her side, her last new jumper Dents in her bumper, she couldn't even ride until I confronted her I wasn't tripping though, spinning dough Round the way they thought it was a miracle How you went from the chick with the cassette stereo like there she go, leaving the whole block disrupted. When I let my baby take off a top in public, buy my chick, it's not a discussion. Not even for a million dollars. Now if you feel me, holler. I got an old school chick, an old school ride with the stripes down the middle and the chrome on the side. Then rear view shaking, got them six by nines. That's my chick. I got an old school ride, got an old school chick. Strikes down the middle when the chrome on the side And we review shaking up them six by nine That's my chick, I got a old school ride, OG uh, I got ice on my rear view mirror Like it was ice in my old school limit Ice on my rear view mirror Like it was ice in my old school limit Came dub to the grain, spoil my chick, brand new kicks, all the kit, fix it quick, if I oil the drip, love old school's way more than the whip, impress all of the girls on the strip when I'm with my old school chicken, Woo. so I stand the bank, want something to drink, I flip a tank, get a death to call it health insurance, give me what in a hurry, I flip a paint, don't care what the made is think, I'm about anyway, go to the strip and call it a day, big body fill up all of your lanes, freaky chick, all those things, said you get back to the truck, got bang, bang, yes that's got that grain, man. Six by nine, that's my
Yeah, I'm gonna finish.